welcome to Sculpture Studios. If you recognise this happy little family, you're either a watcher of the children's television show Peppa Pig, a parent of some that watches, or you're both, there's no judgement here. And let's face it, once you start watching with your children, you soon become an expert on the programme anyway. That's exactly what we've become, where we've taken on a job with Peppa Pig World at Paulton's Park. This is down near Southampton here in the UK, and this job is commissioned by RMA themed attractions. We've been sent a list of around 30 different characters that Paulton's Park would like to be created for their Peppa Pig World expansion in 2018. The two new rides in this area, the Queen's Flying Coach Ride and Grampy Rabbit Sailing Club, are going to be right in the middle of a new area which will be complete with rolling grassy mounds, a castle, picnic areas and loads of scenes and characters from the cartoons themselves. For this project, as I'm sure you can already tell from the images, the early stages and the planning was probably the most difficult part. Life-size figures of various characters already exist in the park, so we need to make sure that our design coincides with those already situated, coincide with the cartoon, and coincide with each other. Any other references the client sent us were very helpful, but we needed to make sure that we decide on a final design that covers all the bases. Bringing something from the 2D into the three-dimensional world always has its challenges, even for something as simple as Peppa Pig, where the characters actually have eyes on one side of their head at a time, depending on which way they're facing, so this needs to be amended for 3D. Making sure the overall heights were appropriate to cater to all of the above criteria, and using small toy models as base references to how each of the characters will look in a module-type construction. We need to consider metalwork, both for the arms and for the legs, that will eventually be installed into the ground, and making sure these figures are stable enough in an upright position. And for the colours, well, we're going to get to the colouring later. We're going to begin by creating a couple of prototype figures, starting with Daddy Pig at the Royal Picnic. Using the usual hot wires, nail brushes and wire brushes, Aiden begins carving from large blocks of polystyrene that have been cut down to the appropriate size. We've done a sort of mini photo shoot with all the toy figures, so we've an accurate front and side on reference to work from. With these toys being the main 3D reference we have, we're favouring and moving more towards these models for our design. The figures are going to be made in two sections, the head and the body, with many of the body shapes being replicated again for other characters that all share the same body size. The metalwork arms and legs will also dictate the size of the characters and how high they stand, but these won't come in till much later on in the project. For now, we need to get this prototype of Daddy Pig approved by the client, so the rest of the characters can all follow suit. When the main shape has been formed and the foam has been sanded down, Aiden's then gone over with a water-based plaster mix, which is left to air dry and then sanded down to a much smoother finish. This isn't particularly strong and is purely to give the shape a smooth finish suitable to take a mould from. Items like the crown, which are only going to be a one-off, are going to have just a blanket coat of glass fibre over the top, which will be cleaned up to a good finish. This is suitable for items like this, where there's no need to create an intricate and unnecessary mould. Daddy Pig's glasses are being modelled up in plasticine, and we're using little hemispheres to make sure the eyes are nice and neat. This will all be included in the mould for the head as well. Right, so this is Rocky, um, he's a new member of the team, I would say workforce, but he doesn't really work at all, and I wouldn't even say force to be reckoned with, he's just annoying and he's, he's basically in the way. Going over with glass fibre now to create the mould, we first sealed the master pattern with layers of a PVA blue release agent, gone over with a gel coat of resin, and now backing up with glass fibre. We create the mould in multiple pieces, two for simple forms like this, and more pieces for more awkward shapes. When we pull the mould apart, we remove the polystyrene pattern and whatever else we might find in there, yeah, we've no idea who that is, and we proceed to clean up the interior of the mould itself. The next part of the procedure follows the same fashion, a release agent, a gel coat and glass fibre is laid up to create the cast. The two parts of the cast are often joined inside the mould before it's popped out, but everything still requires a cleaning up afterwards. The seam lines all need to be filled and sanded back so the whole piece looks like one, and any other blemishes in the gel coat surface that might affect the overall finish. For now, we've skipped the painting and the decoration side for the prototype, just because we're going to cover this side of things later on in the video. 
This is now ready for the client to approve, and we're beginning work on the other characters. Oh, that's not the elephant we're going to be creating. Here we have the model of Peppa Pig herself. We're basing this on this tiny toy model, because this is the only reference we have for these figures to be made in 3D, as opposed to just a 2D cartoon illustration. And, uh, and Aiden's just blocking out the, the girl body and the Peppa Pig head. And we're just making sure we're getting all the sizes correct because a lot of these bodies are going to be replicated the same for all the girl characters. Some of the heads are going to be replicated for different characters. And uh, we need to make sure everything's accurate in the polystyrene stage before we take a mould and before we start replicating in glass fibre. Prototype of Daddy Pig at the Royal Picnic, which is him over here. He's got a 900mm diameter body and we've been sent sizes that we've gridded up of all the characters of how large they'd like everything now that Angela and Rick have been down and they've confirmed they're happy with the size and the scale and the overall shape of this and if we make all of the rest of the figures in the correct ratios and in a similar style to how this one's made. It's going to be made from glass fibre. They're going to be going outside and all the arms and the leg parts that come out the bottom of the body he's only sitting down because it's at a picnic all the metal work is going to be stainless steel so that it should last outside in Portons Park and they're eventually going to be painted with car body paints. Here we have the mould for Emily the Elephant. Though there's only going to be one of her, we've still made a mould so that we can achieve a really nice fibreglass finish. And for the rest of the characters where there are more than one, we've made a slightly stronger mould so that they can withstand multiple pulls and more than one cast being created. With construction well and truly underway, we've had the metal work created in stainless steel by Martin and his team from a fine limit welding. The arms, which are really only appropriate for cartoon characters, Kieran, are going to be installed inside the job before all the heads are placed on top. We drill through and key up the collar areas around the neck and join lines, and this gives each head a really sturdy textured mountain surface to adhere to. The upright metalwork legs coming through the bottom of the bodies are both welded to the arms on the inside, as well as fibreglass to the inside of the shell. This ensures that everything's held firmly in place and the arms can't twist or be knocked into different positions. The metalwork has been painted with a self etching primer and this should provide a better surface for the car body paints to key to than just the bare metal alone. The heads are all being attached to the bodies using an industrial bonding paste and we make sure the exterior join is nice and clean and kept neat. Though the bonding paste means these heads and bodies are going to be really tough to get apart, it's nice to know the majority of these figures will be just out of reach of the public anyway. 
they're going to be behind fenced off areas and included in the ride theming, and this saves us needing to create trapdoor sections to add extra internal bolts and screws to the inside, and this allows us to keep the exterior of the body nice and neat and completely seam free. One part of the job that really is underplayed in the videos is just how much cleaning up is required. I don't just mean sweeping up and tidy in the studio generally, there's always a truckload of dust 24-7 to be honest, but the sanding, filling, re-sanding again and again to maintain a really high quality standard of work. It's easy to skip past this side of the job, particularly in the project videos where we want to move along quickly, but it's what takes the most amount of time here at the studio, so needs to be recognised. What's happening over here, Aidan? What we're going to try and do is match up the face colours. They don't reference them very well, but that is the colour, 607, which is a yellow. And now we're going to start on the cheeks, which is a very, very pale pink. I'm not sure if it's going to relate exactly. And then I'm going to put the colour chart on here as well and work our way down the chart. So Obviously, there. this is just one for Richard Rabbit. Just so you're aware how many colours these Peppa Pig characters came from, this is the swatch sheet for the first set of characters. We've had to match all the Pantone ink colour codes, which the cartoon comes with, to the Rao paint colour codes. We've had to send this off to our paint company to have all these made. And this, believe it or not, is just the first set of characters. We're making another whole set of characters on the other side of this swatch sheet that require a whole new set of colours. Absolutely tons of them. See this here? is now the pink for the cheeks and the blue for the face. And this is just for us, for us really to have a good colour chart reference. So if something gets uh, scratched on site in, like within the theme park, then we can actually come back and reference the colour as well as the number. Right, here we have the 11 characters created for the first set. It's 11 characters for Pirate Island. All the metalwork's been installed in the arms and the legs, or the, rather the metalwork is the arms and the legs, and they've all been painted with a 1K car body paint, and this means we could mix everything up and we could use it from day to day without needing to keep adding hardeners and everything like that. And the 1K paint also means they can easily be dusted in uh, and retouched up if anything gets knocked or damaged. All the characters are gonna have their feet installed on site once they've all been pushed into the ground, and they're all going to stand at their corresponding heights. A lot of the characters have different heights, all been measured to the top of the head. Granny Pig at the moment is the only character that's an adult size. All the other characters are children. Here's Gerald Giraffe already being created for the next batch. And Emily Elephant has just had her first dusting of the lacquer coat that's going on top to protect all the artwork and make it more weather resistant to go outside in the theme park. After the first dusting layer goes on, a second layer goes on top, and this fully protects the paintwork. The first set of characters, predominantly children for Pirate Island, are Pepper and her little brother George. The other girls, we've got Zoe Zebra, Susie Sheep, Emily Elephant and Rebecca Rabbit. The boys, we have Rebecca's little brother Richard, Danny Dog and Pedro Pony. And of course, we have Granny Pig to complete that first set. The second set are going to be more adult based. We're going to have the three construction workers, Mr. Bull, Mr. Labrador and Mr. Rhino. We've got Uncle Pig, Mr. Rabbit dressed as a knight, and this stays within the castle theming. Two royal guards for the queen, Gerald Giraffe on a grassy mound, and Grampy Rabbit to complete the set for Grampy Rabbit's Boat Club and the Queen's Flying Coach Ride. Oh, and I almost forgot, little baby Alexander. For transportation, rather than having the characters laying down during transit, we've created these pallets for each character to stand up in. This has been beneficial both for the transport side as well as manageability here in the studio. This way they don't need to be on the floor, getting scratched up or roll around and get bumped and damaged. We've set one now complete, and on its way to Peppa Pig World and Paulton's Park, it's now time to begin on the next batch.
The two guards are the only characters to have a shoulder joint, as opposed to just straight limbs sticking out of the body like the others. This will allow the arms to go directly downwards, and will give them a more sentinel-like pose. For Grampy Rabbit's beard, this is the only part of the job where we're creating a quick waste plaster mould, the beards being modelled up in clay, and when approved by the client, a quick waste plaster mould is taken, which is capable of getting one fibreglass cast from. As you can see from the cartoon image on the right, it's perfectly fine in 2D, but it's unclear how this would translate into the three-dimensional, so a little artistic license is needed to create this. The bulk part of the painting has been done using a spray gun, and masking up the appropriate areas. But all of the detailing, however, is all done here in the studio by hand. We often have vinyl graphics added to pieces of sculpture, depending on the client's brief, but for this project, the figure really needs to have that hand-drawn type feel, like the real cartoon has. A project like this really does incorporate many different aspects of the work that we do here. Blowing things up in scale for one thing, bringing items from the 2D into the three-dimensional world, things like polystyrene carving, clay modelling, moulds, casts, metalwork, and the painting and finishing side, it's great to see a project through from start to finish. It also allows us to do the vast majority of the work in-house, as it's nice to have control over everything here in the workshop. It gives our whole team, including Rocky, a chance to work on many aspects of the job. It's also great creating something that we'll be able to see up out in the public, and not just for a one-day event, as a lot of our sculptures are often commissioned for. To create something for a theme park once again is a brilliant job for us to take on. Nowadays, when we think about theme parks, we think of the rides and, to be honest, the queue times and the ticket prices. Some parks you go to often forget about the whole decoration aspect, and what truly completes the theme in theme park. The Americans certainly know how to get this side of things right, and so we love contributing to our parks here in the UK to really bring ours to life as well. So with the characters all set up on location, it's another two new rides added to the theme park, 
and a great new area in Peppa Pig World for families to visit and enjoy themselves. We'd like to thank Angela, Leanne, Rick and the rest of the team at RMA Themed Attractions for commissioning us with the work and for being with us every step of the way. Also a thank you to the site team at Portons Park for the installation side of the project. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, yeah.